point can you say, I do want to help the poor, but I don't want to fund war? You have no freedom of economic choice, right? You still have to give government your money. You still have to give up your property. You still have to pay your taxes. Because if you did have a freedom of economic choice and how best to spend your own money, how best to allocate your own resources, government wouldn't threaten to send you to another cage if you didn't pay your taxes, right? So how do you feel about people whose rebuttal is, well, if you just limit the role of government, then people would have more liberties and more rights and freedom to do whatever they choose? Okay, yeah. So like we're talking about limited government. The arguments that we have, for all the other areas we want government to get out of the market are the same arguments you can apply to the areas of security, arbitration, roads. Um, these are things that the market is also very good at, at doing as well. It's not just because we attach like the word government. Ah, oh, magic, right? <laughs> yeah. Only they can do it, right? Um, and security. Security would be only with the ones that they enforce the laws that they have in a contractual obligation, right? They won't be like um, like when you, when the laws here, for example, I don't, I don't have an explicit Con connection with that or a contract with that, right? I never said right. that it's not okay to smoke cannabis, right? <laughs> um, right? Who would say such a thing? Who say right? <laughs> ridiculous, yeah. But under a limited government, it's one preference of an idea or opinion forced into everyone in a demographic uh, region, right? So that's why I think it's it's uh, these particular, we can have rules, we can have laws, we can have security, but one that ha has real respect for property rights, right? One in which the consumer can select which one can best provide them those choices to fulfill their needs, not one overarching one that encompasses and forces everyone to adhere to. Um, but even so, like when we talk about liberty government, when we talk about like arbitration, arbitration you can find everywhere. You're like PayPal arbitration, eBay arbitration. Yes. It's like someone misuses your credit card. It's like, okay, we'll give you $100. We'll <laughs> investigate it for you, right? Yeah. Uh, you, you hit somebody's car, the insurance company, you know, they'll solve that arbitration, right? So arbitration then is not like something unique that only government people, just because they wear a black robe, uh, think only they can do it, right? Uh, it's, just, it's just resolving conflicts. Uh, and I think the market has done time and time again many other ways to uh, resolve that in a lot of different areas. Um, so, yeah, I guess when people talk about limited government, that's what it is to remind them is that the United States started as a limited government in 1776. Look where we are today. Yeah, more, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One exception to politics, to allowing that kind of political violence, uh, at least for people like growing and expanding it more and more, like executive power, right? Uh, Obama ex increased it to where now Trump can enjoy all that. And now Trump, of course, is going to increase it and to the next person that gets into office is going to enjoy it and, and continue to... Yeah, and even if he uses less executive orders relative to Obama, he still used so much more than the presidents that preceded him right. recently. Unless you want to go back to like FDR, but... Yeah, right, so, yeah. <laughs> so now he has his president, he's like, oh, well, I still use less than Obama, even though I used 100 executive orders. Or something like that, sure. Right. You have Obama that finally assassinated like two Americans, right? Without due process of law, right? That's an increase <laughs> of uh, executive powers. Uh, and you have uh, Trump like doing bombing, but you know without like declaration of war of Congress, and that's stuff people have been sliding, you know, sliding through for, like for decades. It's like now, a right? kind of like an umbrella war, but it's, it's not direct. Because right. we haven't actually initiated war in like over 100 years. Right. Technically, yeah, they'll say technically, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. Just, it's a war on terror. It's just not because <laughs> what's you, by saying war on terror, you can attack Syria, you can attack Libya, or anywhere in the Middle East that you want to. But right. by saying we're going to declare war against Libya or Syria alone, then it kind of encapsulates the issue. So right. it just allows for them to use their influence over a variety of countries. They do. They do say. Here, they put a war on us, war on drugs, really, yeah, exactly. it's a war on people, right? <laughs> no, war on minorities, minorities, yeah. War on minorities, <laughs> right. War on poverty, we're just going to declare war on everything. <laughs> here's where they declare war. And I would say, yeah, here's where we're losing our freedoms, not overseas. Here's where our liberties continue to be curtailed further and further until they're, uh, you know, done away with, right? Um, so I think it's very important then to, like, to come out and, and meet people like that and talk about this sure. stuff. Like, another area where they control our liberties would be um, our currency. Right. And fiat currency uh, losing like 95, 97 percent of its value. Yeah, that's uh, that's exactly what got me into Bitcoin, because I like the money circulation principle behind it. And I don't like not having full control of my of my funds, because if I have a thousand dollars in the bank account and something happens and my money gets frozen or anything happens with the bank, I technically have no ownership of my money because it's all inside of a bank account. Whereas with Bitcoin or any kind of cryptocurrency, I have full ownership of the private key. So even if the government knew that it belonged to me, I am not obligated to necessarily give them my private key. Or you could just claim ignorance and that you don't right, know the private know key because about. it's just a random <laughs> string of numbers and letters. You're like, you say that's mine, but it doesn't say my name. You don't, right. <laughs> you don't really know. It just has a million dollars sitting there and they can just only look at it. And right. I, like, I like that fact about cryptocurrency and about ownership. 
Oh, I love it. Yeah. Um, the, the feasibility of it, right? There was like a guy in Japan whose wife was shopping in Europe and uh, they accepted Bitcoin at the grocery store. So took a picture of the QR code, sent it to him, and he just paid it right off on exactly. the phone. Exactly. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just easy, especially for businesses. There's no uh, transaction waiting period. It's instant. Um, and there's that bar. We got to go sometime now. Yeah, it's yeah. Crossing. <laughs> Get yourself a beer flight. You, you scan the QR code with your uh, blockchain app or whatever uh, and just instant, ready to go. Uh, for me, I love it. I think it's the future of money. I think it's the future of currency. Uh, so something that money has never done in all of history to continue to appreciate and value. Appreciate, exactly. Right? Well, logically. As long as people assign value to the blockchain, yeah. then it'll, it'll have inherent value. Though. Right. And then we'll see, like, maybe what's the silver standard. Maybe it might be Litecoin. Yeah, right? Exactly. Maybe it's Ethereum. But I think that's the benefit of Litecoin because from the beginning, they marketed themselves as inferior, so to speak, to Bitcoin by being silver to Bitcoin's gold. Yeah. Where you have, like, these other cryptocurrencies that just say they're better than everybody. They have, <laughs> they're more fungible. They're... Whatever the case may be, but right. yeah, so I think Litecoin has that advantage because they marketed themselves as secondary or even tertiary to Bitcoin that people will always see it in that regard and don't expect it to go to a thousand dollars or something like they would for Bitcoin. Right, yeah, uh, and, and Litecoin has gone up. Yeah, yeah, Litecoin <laughs> has definitely gone up recently. It's like twelve dollars now. I was looking at a little bit as like a stable currency where I could put like digital currency onto because it, it hasn't been moving much, right? It's like sticking around three or four. I was like, all right, this seems like a good stable place. It's not going to drop any more lower than that. Like, it's already bottomed out. Uh, but, like, two weeks before I thought about just putting it all in there, it just started shooting up. So. <laughs> you got to be careful. Fear of missing out, though. A lot of people get burned. <laughs> well, that's pretty cool. I guess um, your interest of, like, uh, fiat currency and all that stuff led you to Bitcoin. Um, where, where did you learn about uh, the fiat currency yourself? Where, where did that knowledge come Well, out? I mean, I've always been interested in business and economics. So, I had, I think I was watching a documentary and someone had interest, like mentioned the seizure of Silk Road and I had never heard of it. And it was based on this currency called Bitcoin. I'm like, okay, this seems pretty cool. It's not controlled by a central government. Yeah. So I decided to look into it. Then I realized like, if I just put $100 in this, there's a good chance it'll go up. Yeah. And I put $100 in. Two months later, it was worth $300. And I'm like, <laughs> all right, I'm definitely checking this, this, this thing out. So I started reading more and more about it. And then I got into the altcoin space and then... Now I'm just an investor in like ICOs and oh, day trading. Nice. So oh. it's, it's, it came back full circle, but I like the luxury of not being able to, well, not being forced to go to a job and clock in. Right, I can just trade right. from home and I can also do something that I love by being in the blockchain space. So. Oh, that's beautiful. That's great. You <laughs> find a way like to adopt it back into your life. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so the group I'm with is Liberty RVA. We also have a student group, Students for Liberty, and we're all about Bitcoin here. We're all about uh, the free market, finding ways to kind of liberate ourselves from government control. That's one thing I love Bitcoin is that there's no Bitcoin bank, right? Yeah, it's exactly. decentralized. You can't like uh, go out there and, and hunt it down. There's an incident at an airport once where this guy had like Bitcoin buttons in his luggage. <laughs> And the uh, TSA is like, okay, we know you got Bitcoin. So it's your Bitcoin, right? <laughs> it's like, what? so you what? It's just, yeah, you never know. <laughs> it's online. Uh, you can print it out. That's another thing. But yeah, no, that's pretty cool. I'm Cal, by the way. I'm Caleb. Nice to meet Kalen. you. Let me uh, Caleb, give you some. Caleb? Caleb? Yeah. All right, Caleb. Cool. Nice. <laughs> uh, let me give you some cool stuff here. Yeah. Thanks for, uh, for the conversation. That's great. That's awesome.